Shout out to Movement for sponsoring this update. You want to look stylish without breaking the bank? Up your watch game and get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash the know. Welcome to The Now, I'm Ashley. It's the Monday after RTX, so full disclosure, we're all loopy as hell, but we hope we saw you at RTX in Austin this weekend. It was so much fun. It was really great getting to hang out with everyone. We had a nobody's happy hour, and it was just so nice to hang out and talk about video games and all that stuff with you guys. Thank you so much for coming. If you were able to make it, or if you were able to catch our panels and everything on Mixer, really good time. But we also have like a whole job to do, uh, and that would be the news, so let's do it. It looks like artificial intelligence is one step closer to beating us at video games. So yeah, sorry to come from like a really cool event to just like depress you. The team from Elon Musk's OpenAI project beat some high-level Dota 2 players recently in a best of three series. The AI won the first two games decisively. The human team did manage to get a win in the third game, so we're not entirely obsolete. We did it, guys. Uh, of course, we saw the same AI beat human opponents a little more than a month ago, but this latest team consisted of four pro players and a Dota 2 commentator, so the skill level, a bit higher. It was pretty solid, but despite better competition, AI still reigned supreme. One of the participants, Austin Capitalist Walsh, tweeted, Never felt more useless in my life, but we're having fun at least, so I think we're winning in spirit. Sure aren't winning in game. Oh, <laughs> we'll see how the AI does later this month because it's actually going to be taking on the best Dota 2 players in the world at Valve's The International 8. So, all it's gonna take is like the top half percentile of pro Dota 2 players to maybe fight off the AI. We're in so much trouble if it ever gets mad at us. <laughs> EA has apologized for censoring the name of former NFL player Colin Kaepernick in Madden 19. Kaepernick previously played for San Francisco 49ers. He became really well known, especially recently, uh, for his protests during the national anthem. Uh, he was shouted out by rapper Big Sean in a YG song titled Big Bank, which was on the Madden 19 soundtrack, but in the game, EA edited out Kaepernick's name, which was then spotted by fans and prompted a whole, we're very sorry, from EA. Uh, in a statement, EA apologized to Kaepernick and the artists, calling it an unfortunate mistake. Uh, it turns out it's not because they just really don't like the guy, it's, it really was like this whole thing is a rights issue. EA said, members of our team misunderstood the fact that while we don't have the rights to include Colin Kaepernick in the game, this doesn't affect soundtracks. We messed up and the edit should never have happened. EA said they're gonna fix it in an update to the game that's gonna release today, so that'll all be sorted out. In a move that could have some big ramifications in mobile gaming, the developers of Fortnite said they're not going to use the Google Play Store when the pocket version of the game launches on Android devices. That is because, according to Epic Games founder Tim Sweeney, the percentage that Google takes of every app sale, which is 30% to be precise, is way too high. And He said unlike digital console shops, which require a lot of hardware investment, mobile platforms don't actually do all that much for the money, he feels like. Uh, in an interview with PocketGamer.biz, Sweeney said that for open platforms, 30% is disproportionate to the cost of the services these stores perform, such as payment processing, download bandwidth, and customer service. Instead, Fortnite players are going to have to download the game launcher directly from the Fortnite website. No release date's been set for the game. We'll see if this move by Epic prompts Google to make any changes to the amount it charges or if they get something going on there. There are all kinds of really weird restrictions on uh, being able to purchase things through other apps sometimes. And this isn't a Google Play thing, but it's a uh, an iPhone, like an, an app store thing, is it's the reason that like you can't by Kindle books via Am like the uh, the Amazon app on iPhone is because they don't want you buying stuff because they don't get the cut of that. It's a whole weird, messy business. I'll be really curious to see what ends up happening with this. Now you might remember that Bethesda announced Doom Eternal at E3. It's the sequel to the very well-regarded reboot of Doom that released in 2016. And now we know when we're gonna see some gameplay probably not a huge surprise, but Bethesda tweeted, it's gonna be shown off in a live stream this Friday at QuakeCon. Which, yeah, so 
So, so not a surprise. This stream is going to start at 11 a.m. Central Time. It's going to be viewable on both Twitch and YouTube. And considering how good the last game was, this one is definitely worth keeping an eye on. And also, QuakeCon's always a lot of fun. They show a lot of gameplay for a bunch of their different games, usually at that event. So, worth checking out the streams, or eh, if you're in the Dallas area, just head on down to QuakeCon. It looks like Octopath Traveler had a good launch on the Switch. We talked about how it, they ran out of physical copies because it did way better than they expected. We have talked about that in the past. And the throwback JRPG has shipped a million units in its first three weeks, according to Nintendo and Square Enix. In a tweet, Nintendo of Europe said the game had shipped a million units globally, including downloads from the Switch eShop. They added, the developers at Square Enix would like to thank you for making this possible. It seems like the response to the game has, well, been very surprising for everyone since you know Square Enix had to repeatedly apologize because after they ran out the first time they ran out again uh, still very good news for fans of JRPGs because this kind of response basically ensures that we'll see more games like this in the future and it says hey we want these kinds of games and we want them on the switch and we will buy them and so there will be other developers taking notice Hopefully. Speaking of Octopath Traveler, it looks like its developer, Square Enix, could have another game in the works that should make us all very happy. Twitter user Nibelian noticed that the Bravely default Twitter account recently changed its name to Bravely and then a bunch of empty circles. Uh, also posted a picture of what looks like the character Aerie from the Bravely default games. And finally, they also tweeted for fans to look forward to the next game from Studio Business Division 11, which is the group that made both Octopath Traveler and the Bravely Default games. So, seems like it could be a very definite possibility. I mean, given, again, the success of Octopath Traveler, it would make sense, and I just kind of want all of them, and I want them all on the Switch, and I want them all right now, so. <laughs> Everyone do that. Just all for me. A ninja is one of the best Fortnite players around and also very popular Twitch streamer. You may have heard his name before, especially if you follow the news, because he's a big deal and he gets talked about a lot by people like us. And when it comes to followers, that dude is in a league of his own. Ninja recently tweeted he became the first Twitch streamer to pass 10 million followers on the platform, which, in case you're keeping count, that's a lot. He wrote, this milestone is seriously ridiculous and the one I am most proud of. I have been streaming for a very, very long time and I cannot express how grateful I am to be in the position I am in. And that's more than double, by the way, uh, the total of another very, very popular streamer, Shroud, who has a little less than 4 million followers. And even that, like, that's still really, really impressive just to give you context of sort of the field that he's playing in and what's considered enormous. So being more than double that is absolutely insane. I would say uh, definitely top of the mountain. The next round of characters has been announced for Tekken 7, and one is a very familiar, very villainous face. A trailer from Bandai Namco showed off series favorites Anna Williams and Lei Wu Long, who returned to the game after a lot of fan demand. And then the developer dropped another bomb on us, or rather a spiked baseball bat. Yeah, uh, Negan from AMC's The Walking Dead is coming to the series in a pretty cool crossover. We didn't get to see him in action, just a few shots of his silhouette and of course the infamous bat. It's just more of a teaser of his presence, really. Uh, the characters and a few more unannounced ones are uh, part two of the game's Season Pass 2, which the developer says is coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more. We're going to learn more about the upcoming Super Smash Bros. Ultimate very, very soon. Nintendo tweeted they're holding a special direct live stream this Wednesday that's going to feature new information about the game. So in case like the, the 30, 40 minutes, whatever, at E3 wasn't enough of a deep dive, you're going to get more. And it's going to come courtesy of none other than director Masahiro Sakurai, who created Smash Brothers. The live stream's scheduled to start 9 a.m. Central Time Wednesday morning. Of course, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate will very famously bring back every Smash Brothers character from across all the previous previous games with some new ones as well. The game is one of the big exclusive this year for the Switch. It's scheduled to release December 7th. So curious to see what this does for the Switch's momentum. Hopefully good things. It seems like Smash people are mostly happy, but it'll all come down to execution, right? So we'll see what comes out of this direct this week. After months of rumor and speculation, it's officially official. 
John Luke Picard is back, baby! Sir Patrick Stewart made it so with a surprise appearance at a Las Vegas Star Trek convention where he announced that Picard will be front and center for the next Star Trek show being developed for CBS All Access. So this is a whole new series, not a future season of the currently running Star Trek Discovery or a reboot of The Next Generation, but one that will focus on the next chapter of Picard's life. Stewart said it is an unexpected but delightful surprise to find myself excited and invigorated to be returning to Jean-Luc Picard and to explore new dimensions within him, seeking out new life for him when I thought that life was over. Stewart's going to executive produce this new show alongside Alex Kurtzman, who's been part of the Star Trek universe since J.J. Abrams' Star Trek in 2009. Uh, all other details, including when to expect the show to debut, are currently under wraps. We do know that Picard's gonna once again journey where no one has gone before, and that's pretty exciting. So we'll keep you posted as we get more details, because we're all gonna be just like anxiously awaiting them. I wanna see what's coming. Now, August, usually not the best month for interesting box office news. It's just a little bit quieter. The big blockbusters of the summer, they've come and gone. All the good horror movies are holding out till October or so. But something pretty cool did happen this past weekend. So amongst the Mission Impossible still raking in the dough, not a huge surprise. Christopher Robin kind of underperforming. There was Marvel's Black Panther crossing a big old threshold. The film's been available on home video since May 15th, but it's been so popular, it's actually still stayed in some theaters and people are still choosing to go see it there instead of at home. In its 25th weekend of release, Black Panther inched over the $700 million mark in the domestic US box office, which makes it only the third film in history to accomplish that. The other two are Star Wars The Force Awakens and Avatar. So that is money-making company. Black Panther is also the only movie to stay in theaters that long in the entirety of 2018. So. Wakanda forever indeed. Crazy milestone. Congratulations to everyone on that team. That was a fun movie. I like that movie. All right, that does it for our first roundup back from RTX. Let us know what you think of all this news in the comments down below to make sure you get all the crazy updates from every corner of the internet every weekday like this video. And if you're new around here and you've never heard of RTX or what the hell we're talking about anyway, Subscribe to The Know and we will tell you all about it and then you can join us next year, it'll be fun. Shout out to Movement for sponsoring this update. These watches, look, they're not gonna shout at you for not standing enough or walking enough steps. They're not, they're not out to like annoy you to death and you don't have to charge them every day just for them to tell you the damn time. They're watches, they're gonna do the watch thing. Plus, they're not gonna break the bank doing it. MVMT is a business developed by a couple of broke college kids who figured out they could go online and cut out the retail middleman to offer the best possible prices. So, and movement watches start at just $95, where you'd be paying a couple hundred in a store. Plus, you can get additional bands to change the look to keep the watch fresh and coordinated with your style without, again, having to break the bank buying a whole bunch of watches. It's all working out for them too. Movement's shipped more than two million watches around the world, more than doubled the watch selection in their store, expanded into sunglasses, which are also really great. I have a pair, I like them very much. They've even got bracelets now, so that's cool. I've also got, uh, I've got a couple of the watches. I've got this one in black. This is like my main watch, but then I've got one in silver as well. They're great. I actually ended up getting another band for this one as well. This is a, it's black and rose gold, so I got a rose gold band for when I'm feeling extra fancy. It's really nice. It's easy to change, just at least pins in the side and it just, they go on and off real easy. You can get 15% off with free shipping and free returns. And to get it, just visit mvmt.com slash the no.